Hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. <laughs> Okay, under the bonnet checks. Well, the first thing you're going to do usually is check the oil. Dipstick being here on the 300 TDI, just in case you didn't know. And the process is obviously to check the depth of the oil in the sump. First thing to do is to wipe the stick and then pull the dipstick out and check again so you have the correct level that you're reading. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually just a tad bit too high. Okay, so the dipstick has a full marker notch and it's marked full. That is the maximum level you can have on your engine. And the low marker, which this is the minimum oil level. Anywhere in between is okay. Not trying to teach grandma how to suck eggs, but you should always check your oil level with a vehicle on level ground. Since the vehicle is new to us, we don't know why the oil level is too high. We just presume it's been topped up and too much oil has been put in there. Well, she'll have to monitor that. It's okay if it's just slightly over the high. The dipstick has an O-ring, which helps it locate and stay, and it also acts as a seal. So if you want to go wading and you take the water level above the engine, just keep this in mind. In the not too distant future, we will be changing the oil on this vehicle, because the oil smells. However, Carrying on with the engine bay, another important place to look when you're inspecting is the filler cap to make sure it's not leaking. This one is, and it will let oil drain past and onto the rocker box and into the valleys, and it will, well, it will simulate an oil leak. Worth looking around this area to make sure that the gasket for the rocker cover isn't leaking. At the back's a good culprit. This one happens to be leaking. Looking further into the back there, I can see that there is oil going down onto the bell housing and the flywheel housing. This also could be the reason that the sump is wet here. Now, I'm listing this down as oil leak engine, and it's not clear where it is at the moment. Generally, the best way to do this is to have the whole of the engine and the gearbox washed and any other components that are leaking and then check the leaks. Before we dash off to do any rectification, we need to check the vehicle over thoroughly. So we have more fluid containers, coolant, brake reservoir, the clutch fluid reservoir, the screen wash and the power steering reservoir. These you can all see here on the 300 TDI. They will vary from vehicle to vehicle obviously. Checking them regularly is important. This will know if you've got any leaks or if it's been consumed somewhere. Right, so I'm going to go for the power steering fluid first of all and we have a dipstick on the reservoir. Generally, you do not want to have the reservoir over full because this can push fluid out of the container, which you don't want. I check it like this, and what you see is it is on the first mark of the dipstick. All right, it's worth checking the filter as well. If it's dirty, clean it or replace it, depending on. If it's damaged, definitely replace it. It also has a breather. Make sure it's clean because this will cause problems if it's blocked. All right, so we looked at that, we know the level's low. Screen wash here, you know it's a consumable that always needs topping up regularly, depending on how you use your wipers. Engine coolant reservoir here, it should be about half full, and you always allow for expansion in the tank. There's fluid in there, we'll check that later to see the strength of the antifreeze. All right, next one is the brake master cylinder reservoir here, and it should always be topped up to the level. What we do also is check to see if there's any moisture content in this. Now this is quite important. If it's got moisture content in there, your brakes will be pretty bad. However, that's good at the moment. So we can screw that back on. The other one which a lot of people seem to neglect to look at is the clutch fluid reservoir. We can see here that it's been neglected or it's got a leak and the fluid is in bad condition. So we're going to check for hygroscopia or moisture in there, and this one will fail. Remember, this will rot the pipes out, so it's worth remembering that. It also has a breather on it, believe it or not, in the cap, so make sure that's clear. That's the fluids looked at. Now, what I'm going to look at is the steering shaft, which goes through the engine bay to the steering box. The idea is to feel for any play or wear that's in the shaft on the splines or on the UJ. 
You must also check to see if the bolts are tight or not. And usually what you do is you grab hold of it and wiggle it to see what sort of play you have here. Not the play that's in the steering box, but any play that might be on the splines or the joints. This is a safety item, so it's not to be overlooked and checked regularly. What we should be looking at is major components first, and we're talking about the drive belt, the pulleys, and the drive belt idler. Now, the idler here has play in it, and this is actually quite excessive. And you also see on the surface of it, it has something that is caught up and stuck to the running face. If you listen to this video clip, you'll hear the squeaking of the bearing. I don't know if you can hear the sound of that, but that was in bad condition, so I'm changing the belt, and I'm also putting an idler tensioner on it. This is quite an easy job to do, and we'll show you how to do this in a tutorial. And of course, we'll be fitting the best we can possibly get for the money that we have, which is Daco. Right, so we're at the front of the engine. It's worth inspecting the radiators. If you haven't looked at your radiator before, make sure that you look at both sides. This side has corrosion between the fins, if you can see that down there. That's quite common for Land Rovers to go there. And on the other side, the front part of it possibly could be clogged up with mud or muck. So make sure the fins are as clear as possible. This one has a little bit of damage in there, if you can see up there. Always worth spending a little bit of time inspecting this area. Also make sure that the rubbers are in place, that the grill and the cowlings are all fixed properly. The more vibration there is, the more likely is it is actually going to vibrate to pieces. So check for the rubbers. So we've got a few defects here and we're going to write those down. Plenty of paper because it's a Land Rover. I would rely on lists the more than your memory because there's something you might forget. So write it down. Generally on inspections, you're looking for things that are loose, rattling, leaking, causing problems. Sometimes you'll have a perished pipe which will cause you problems with performance and this is one of them. This pipe up here goes to the injector pump and it chafes on the back of the engine sometimes and you won't get the engine running right. Chafing is a big problem especially with electrical components. The repair that's been done here, somebody has left off a cover leaving a bolt exposed and you have the alternator which goes to the battery Okay, chafing on this pipe, which could cause a problem and a short. So, these sort of things you keep in mind when you're looking around your vehicle. In part two, we'll be looking at coolant hoses, fuel lines, and what to look out for for potential hazards. So until then, stay tuned.